The Vow, Chapter 6. Four months have passed since Rod proposed to me. Since then, the two of us have been working tirelessly to, pre to prepare ourselves for the future. Father does not plan on stepping down immediately after we marry, but I know the day is fast approaching and I do not want to make Father wait. Really? Because I'm like, your dad's still pretty young. But he's just like, no, you're, you're taking over the kingdom now. Let the newlywed people take care of it. I'm retiring. Today, Father and I are discussing scenarios I will have to face as a ruler. The specific situation is a dispute between two parties. This sort of thing happens frequently, most often between businessmen. Most will require an audience and ask for advice. He tilts his head. Tell me, as a just and unbiased ruler, what would your primary tactic be? First, I would allow both parties to argue their side. If it was obvious which was the offending party, I would offer a solution based on the laws. Laws which they would already know. And if it wasn't obvious? Then I would seek the opinion of the council and call on witnesses to testify. Father looks at me for a long moment, his expression unreadable. I force myself not to waver as I stare back at him. And then he smiles and I feel myself cave with relief. Whew. An excellent answer. I release a sigh I did not realize I was holding. I must sound exasperated because Father laughs. <laughs> you always have such a serious look on your face. Speak for yourself. I feel like I am trying to prove myself in a courtroom during these lessons. Excellent. That is exactly the atmosphere I want these lessons to have. He leans forward. It is essential to master a neutral expression and to keep your emotions hidden from others. Well, Lissat has that in spades. It is difficult to appear unbiased if one openly wears their emotions. He shakes his head. Truthfully, I think you already have that part down. Rod, on the other hand... He needs to learn to stop scowling. Rod is good at keeping secrets, but his scowl can be intimidating. You both have your strengths. I eye the crown on his... head. And sigh. As of right now, I cannot imagine bearing its invisible weight. But I still have much to learn. So do we all. Learning is an endeavor that never ends. Rod would scream if he heard you say that. He despises all the lessons. They are indeed one of the most frustrating parts of court life. Every time I become frustrated with my lessons, I think of the ones Ophelia and Emmeline were forced to take when they first came here. I remember the lessons I held Emmeline with. I remember her perseverance. And after that, I am motivated again. It helps to know we are all suffering together. Misery loves company, as they say. The king stands, stretching his arms out before him. But it is also important to take a reprieve from that misery so that we may face the next day with renewed motivation. You ought to go and rest now, Lucette. You have earned a break. Thank you, Father. I slide out of my chair. Thank you for... I think of his trust in me, of his acceptance and happiness of my relationship with Rod. Thank you for everything. My father shakes his head. You owe me no gratitude, but I do owe you my thanks. I am flabbergasted when he bows before me. What? You two trusted me with your secret, even when I did not deserve to be trusted. Father. I am speaking the truth, nothing more. You could have turned away from me, Lucette. You had every right to give up on me as your father. But you decided to give me a chance to rectify things, and for that, I will always be grateful. He leans over to kiss my forehead. I love the father-daughter stuff in this, it's so good. 
Makes me sad for waltzes right when I get to it. Good night, Lucid. I return his warm smile with one of my own. Good night, father. I reach out to give him the briefest of hugs before curtsying and walking from the room. Rod is waiting for me outside. The moment I exit, he falls into stride beside me. How did your lesson go? It went well. I apologize for making you wait so long. You wait for me after horrendously long lessons, and I wait for you after horrendously long lessons. It seems only fair. Besides, I just got back from Em's room. And how did she like your gift? Ah, oh, well... A week ago, Emmeline had announced she was going to visit Brugantia for the first time. After officially receiving permission from the king to court Emmeline, Lance had started visiting monthly. He has come and gone four times already. On his most recent visit, he asked Emmeline to accompany him for a month-long visit to Brigantia. The moment Rod found out, he insisted he make her something that she could take with her to make her feel more at home. Knowing how fond she was of Sebi, he came to me and asked if I could help him make a small plush toy for her. Rod is extremely earnest and does his best at everything, but... And you stitch the ears like this. Mm. Rod looks at me aghast. I don't understand. What don't you understand? Any of it. I can't even see the shape of the ears. Am I even doing this right? You are doing fine. You just need to tighten the stitches on so the ears do not come off. But where even are the ears? You have been working on them this entire time. Uh, he really is helpless at this. When Rod continues to have difficulties pulling the thread through, I gently take the plush from him. Watch and learn. He flushes as I lean over his shoulder to work, carefully looping the thread a couple more times before I tie the knot. I continue working with him for the next ten minutes, carefully guiding his hands through the stitches. There! All done! The disappointment is evident on his face when he holds up the plush. It's terrible. It's nowhere near as cute as the plush you made me. To be fair, I have a lot more experience. But this was such a simple design. Oh, it really is terrible. It is not. Also, we are talking about Emmeline. She cannot possibly dislike anything you give her. I think it is very cute. If you say so. He sets the plush down on the table with a sigh. Oh. She is only leaving for a month, you know. That's how it began with me, too, you remember? I didn't think I'd be gone that long, but then months passed, and... His eyes flipped to mine. I made you wait for so long. That's all in the past. You're here now. That is what matters. I lean down to plant a kiss on his head. Besides, even if Emmeline does end up staying longer, I know she would not fail to write letters letting us know when she would be back. I said I was sorry about that. I know. I just like to see you blush. You're the worst. He turns his gaze to the plush toy. I just want Em to have this piece of home, no matter how long she's gone. I pat the little plush on the head. She's going to love it. I flash Rod a teasing smile. Will you make me a plush toy when we get married? Rod scowls. You deserve something much nicer than... whatever this is. I pick up the small plush. I thought you liked challenges. Or are you afraid you'll never be as good as me? Rod narrows his eyes. Now you're speaking his language. Fine. Then I will make something for you. I could never say no to one of your requests. What he means is that he will never back away from a challenge. I will never not find his determination inspiring. 
I lean over his shoulder and plant a kiss on his cheek. I'll look forward to it. M had tears in her eyes when I gave it to her. At first I thought it was because the plush was so ugly it made her cry. I cannot help my laughter. <laughs> and that wasn't the case, was it? No, she kept telling me how much she adored it. I told you she would love it. I open the door to my bedroom when we arrive. Ra's expression crumples as we enter. It feels like so much is happening all at once with Emmeline, but things are moving so slowly on my end. With us. He looks crestfallen as he slides into my desk chair. I'm sorry you have to wait so long for our wedding. Where is this coming from? Emmeline is not getting married. No, but the two of them still feel like they're taking more active steps toward the future than I am. Rod, you know I am not in a hurry. In fact, I am glad we get to walk this path. Together. Without rushing. We are not lacking for time. And... I want to enjoy the here and now. Rod shakes his head. I'm so accustomed to worrying about the future. It's strange to just focus on the present. But it is not unenjoyable. I would hope not. I like to think I can make the present very enjoyable. Every moment I spend with you is enjoyable. He pauses, suddenly looking thoughtful. After a few moments, he stands, expression suddenly somber. Actually, I've been thinking. If all we can ever control is the present, then... I am sitting on the bed when Rod walks across the room to take my hand. R Rod? I want to make my vow to you. Here and now. <laughs> this is a little unusual. Our whole love story has been a little unusual, don't you think? He holds out a hand. Oh my goodness. Can I have your ring? Our fingers brush as I hand him the ring, and I flush as he kneels down before me. I promise to make it better for our wedding, but I... I'd like to make a vow to you tonight as well. You're not allowed to tease me for this, okay? I nod, smiling. Ra gently takes my hand. He holds the ring in his other. Even though I know this is not the real thing, not even a rehearsal, my heart trembles with anticipation. Lusat, I did not know the meaning of true love until I met you. I had never known what it meant to give someone my heart until we met. But now you have it. You have me in all of my entirety. I want to stay by your side for the rest of our lives. Though our paths diverge in the past, I will make sure they remain intertwined in the future. I never want to leave you alone. Not again. He takes a deep breath as he slides the ring onto my finger. My eyes are glistening with tears when he brings my hand to his lips and kisses my knuckles. I will love you forever and always, Lucette. I grip his hand tightly, pull him toward me. I love you too, Rod. And I will proudly proclaim it for the rest of the world to hear. Rod smiles. It is such a gentle, beautiful smile. No more secrets. Never again. Rod cups my cheek, brushing a stray tear from my eyes. He presses his lips to mine. A seal to our promise. I pull Rod closer, closer, until we are lying together on the bed, our limbs entangled, my face pressed into his chest. I will always love you, Rod. Forever and always. Forevermore, you may say. I awake to bright morning sunlight seeping into my room. Wait, when did I fall asleep? I blink dazedly and try to turn, but then I feel the arms around my waist and gasp. Good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> uh, hi there. <laughs> so you guys do change.
change out of your fancy clothes. This pleases me. Rod's voice is a sleepy mumble as he pulls me closer. I can feel his bare chest through the thin fabric of my nightgown. My stomach is suddenly filled with butterflies. Right. Last night, Rod made his vow, and then we... Well, it somehow turned into this. Somehow, quotation marks. Lusa. What? what I can feel his smirk against my skin. <laughs> Are you embarrassed? I am not. Rod laughs against my skin. <laughs> he presses a soft kiss to the nape of my neck. I should sleep shirtless more often. It's nice to see you so flustered for a change. <laughs> what? No complaints. Must I kiss you to get you to stop talking? Hmm, maybe that was my goal all along. I turn to face him and, as promised, press a kiss to his lips. Rod's returning kiss is sleepy, warm. He touches his forehead to mine and whispers softly. I love you, Lucette. I love you too. Rod nuzzles his face into my neck. I run my hand through his hair. I marvel, not for the first time, that we are finally here, together. Just for a little longer, let's stay like this. I nod as I press my lips to his forehead. We have all the time in the world, Rod. Once, I wished I could live my life openly loving Rod. It turns out, with perseverance and hard work, that dream was more than possible. That was the end, wasn't it? Yes! And their love lasted forevermore. Night venture achievement. <laughs> Aw, yay. And we get credits. That was beautiful. <laughs> I'm only slightly disappointed we didn't get the actual wedding between them. But considering how slowly they take their relationship, it makes sense that we didn't quite get there yet. But I'm, that's the only thing I'm a wee bit bummed about. But other than that, I cannot complain about the amount of sugar we got in this route. <laughs> oh my goodness, it was just amazing. Oh, my heart is so full. I got such warm feels. <laughs> I loved Rod in the first game, and uh, my love just grew even more for him in this. I, I'm just amazed at how far these two have come. They're so open with their affection, and it's lovely to see. Just fantastic. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm just over here grinning like a stupid idiot. <laughs> Oh, what a great way to start this game. Oh, they're both... Oh, this is the opening but piano version. Neat! Very cute. Yeah, I don't... I don't know what else to say. I'm just enjoying this. <laughs> so that was the... I assume that was the best, and it must have been the best ending. Because I don't think I actually missed any of the right choice indicators. I wonder what the good ending's going to be. I was kind of expecting. What I was kind of expecting was that the best ending was going to end with the actual wedding. And that the good ending was going to be they were going to wait longer, but that wasn't the case. They're waiting longer, even in the best ending. <laughs> because, of course they are. Yay, applause for all the Kickstarter backers. Good job, everybody. Oh, I'm so happy this game exists. I have been waiting forevermore, and now we finally have it. Hey, it's our shoe from the first game. Thank you for playing Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore. 
Thank you for the game, Daisuke. It's only my first run through and I'm in love. Taking me back to the menu screen, probably. We shall see. Yeah, all right, we are back at the menu screen. Oh, there is something on the table now. I saw that. I see you. What exactly was that? It's a shell! Yay! We wrote a letter to our boo rod. Lovely. So we're just going to collect letters? I'm all right with this. I am more than all right with this. Well, guys, that was Rod's best ending. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I will be really curious to see if my list will change as we go through this game. I think Rod was my number three, so he was right in the middle of the guide list in the first game. And he was certainly off to a strong start in the sequel. So that was, I hope, the best ending. I don't know how I can check that, but anyway. Regardless, it was a pretty dang good ending. And now I am going to go for the opposite ending, which I assume is going to be the good ending. So if you'd like to see what that is, hopefully I'll see you over there, guys. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I will see you later.